Hi, Dana here. Welcome to So Learn Create. I'm glad you joined us today. And if you like what you see, be sure you click that subscribe button. Today's project, we're going to be making a neck cooling wrap. I live in Texas where it gets really hot in the summer. And so these are really nice to put around your neck and keep you cooler when you're outdoors working or playing. It is filled with micro water beads and I'll show the link for that will be in the description box of where you can order them. I got mine on Amazon and then you soak them in water and they swell up and then you put it around your neck, tie it and it stays wet and cool all day to help you stay cooler in the Texas heat. So let's get started. For the neck cooling wrap, you'll need uh, just a few supplies. You'll need some fabric that is five inches wide by 35 inches long. You'll need some micro water beads. I got mine at Amazon and they're really, really tiny when they first come and then they swell up, of course, when you add the water. You'll need some basic sewing supplies, some clips, a ruler, pencil, a chopstick to turn, scissors, and then you'll also need a two and a half inch square to help us get these angled tips at the end of our neck wrap. So to get the fabric cut to five inches by 35 inches, an easy way to do that is to take a bigger piece of paper and I'm using an old calendar and then I measured five inches across drew my lines and then you would draw your line. This one happens to be exactly 17 and a half inches which is half of 35 so all I would have to do is draw my line and cut this paper out. Then once you have your paper cut out take your fabric and you want to fold it selvage to selvage and the selvage is the end of the fabric that is factory finished and that is the longest width of your fabric. So you would fold it selvage to selvage, lay it out flat, put your pattern here, and then you only have to cut one, uh, two sides. And that's an easy way to get a long piece of fabric cut accurately. Or you can use a rotary cutter if you have that available. But if you don't and you have paper and scissors, that's an easy way to get a long piece of fabric that you can cut easily. So always divide it in half, cut your paper pattern, and then put it on your fabric. So I've already cut mine at uh, five inches by 35 inches long. So we're gonna take and we're going to fold it in half, what I call hot dog style, so that means the length of it, and we're gonna clip it. And we're gonna clip all the way down And we're going to make our points for the end of our ties. And if you notice, they're angled. And so to do that the easy way, because that is a 45 degree angle, your width folded in half is two and a half inches. So I have a two and a half inch square. So I cut it and then I folded it. And then I want to put the point for mine on the folded edge of the fabric. So I'm going to put my point to where the, my point is on the folded edge of my fabric. And I line that up, my point's in the corner, and then the other point is at the top, end, top edge of my folded fabric. And I'm just going to draw a line. And this line is actually going to be a line that we stitch on. So do not cut this part off yet. You will cut it off before we turn it, but this is going to be our stitching line, not the edge of our fabric. So I'm going to clip, I'm going to show you how to do the other one, and then I'm going to finish clipping it. So if I go to the opposite end, fold it in half, and you want to make sure that your pencil lines are on the same side. So you just kind of move it down, fold it, go ahead and clip it a little bit. 
Again, I'm going to put my point on my folded edge. Points here, and I'm going to draw my line. And it just has to be dark enough where you can see it because you are going to stitch on that line. Then when we get ready, finish clipping, I want to find the center of my fabric. So I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm just going to do a finger press. Kind of show me where that center is. And I need to leave an opening to turn it. So I'm going to use my green clips. And I want this opening to be about three fingers wide because it is kind of a long tube. So I put that on either side of that center so that my opening is in the center of my neck wrap. So I'm going to finish clipping my other edges so they don't slip on me and I'll meet you at the machine. Now that we're at the machine, we're going to start at our green clip and sew from this green clip to this end of our project and then come back, start at this green clip and go to the opposite end. It's a little di different than when we normally leave an opening. So we're going to start here at this green clip. I'm going to use my uh, foot edge as my seam allowance so it's a little over a quarter of an inch. And I always like to start with my needle down in my project. And I'm just going to stitch on the open folded side of my project. This is great for practicing your long seams, making sure that you're keeping that fabric right along that foot edge. Now we're coming to our drawn line to make our points. I'm going to stitch because I want to stitch right on that line from here all the way to this point. So I'm going to stitch right up to that line, put my needle down on the line, lift my presser foot and turn so that I now have this angle and I'm stitching right on top of that line. All the way to the point and I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch right there at the point and then off the edge. So now I've stitched right on that line and then we'll clip this away in just a minute. So I'm going to go back to my green other green clip, stitch from here to my other end and then I'll meet you at the mat. Now we've stitched all the way down and we've got our stitch across here and we need to trim this fabric. So I'm going to trim it about a quarter of an inch away from my stitch line and my pencil line so that I have a little bit of a seam allowance there. I'm going to do that to both ends. That reduces the bulk so when we turn it, I get nice crisp points on this part of my scarf. Then you're going to find your center. And to turn this right side out, you're going to kind of wiggle your fingers down in there as best you can because it's pretty long. Get to the end and then you're going to take your chopstick or whatever you're using and just kind of poke it in and find it on the other in the opening and then pull. Then we're going to do the same thing with the other end and out. Now we've got it turned, but we need to get these corners po poked out. So you put your chopstick all the way in, and anytime you're using your chopstick to get your corners or points good, you want to do it gently. You don't want to push real hard or you'll rip your stitching, and then you've got to turn it wrong side out and restitch. So always do it gently. So now I have a nice crisp point. Go back and do the other end. 
and you want to get this corner right here nice and sharp if you can and then the tips all right next thing is we're going to press this so it lays nice and flat anytime you have a long seam like this when you press it if you don't make that seam lay flat then it'll have a tendency to get overlapped or tucked under so if you take your seam edge and just gently roll it in your fingers it'll make that seam pop up to the top and it won't um, it presses better so we're going to just kind of roll it all the way down when we come to our center we want to make sure that these tuck in with our seam so when we stitch this opening closed it'll lay nice and pretty okay and then we're going to press it and when you press it you want to make sure that it lays flat with the fold at one side and the seam at the top and the reason for that is you don't want your seam down the center or it will be uh, uncomfortable when it's on your neck so you want that seam at the top and the fold at the bottom press it all the way down okay then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our scarf in half we're going to put our points together and we're going to press to find the center of our scarf tuck that in a little better so I've got my points and I've folded and I want to press so I can see where that center is really well all right then our cooling scarf has three sections it has the tips and then three filled sections where the beads are so we're going to mark where we're going to use these do these stitch lines to make the channels for our beads. So you want to open up your project. This is our center line right above our opening. And we're going to measure from our center line, we're going to measure three inches to one side. Of our center so our center is here and I'm going to put a mark right here at three inches three inches to that side to the left side of the center and then I'm going to measure three inches this is a six inch ruler so it makes it nice and easy three inches to the right side of our center line and I'm going to draw those lines because those are the lines where I'm actually going to stitch This makes our center channel for our beads. Then I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to measure six inches from the line that I just drew. Not from the center, but six inches from that line. And I'm going to draw a line here. This makes our left channel, and then this part here will be our tie, where there'll be no beads. I'm gonna repeat the same thing. I'm gonna go back to my center. This is my three inch line I drew. I'm gonna line up my ruler, and I'm gonna draw six inches from the th line, three inches off the center, and draw another line. And I'm actually going to use those lines as my stitch guide. So I will stitch here. This will create my tie on this end. We're going to do that first. Then we're going to fill with beads. Then we're going to come back and stitch here and, and so forth. So I'll meet you at the machine. Now we're at the machine. And this is our center opening. And this is our first three inch line. And this is the line where we drew six inches from the three inch line. This is the seam that we want to stitch. 
just the tips. So we're going to line it up on that line, roll our needle down, and I'm going to stitch. I'm going to go right to the edge, and because this is going to be ties and this is going to be full with beads, I'm going to make sure that seam is really good. So I'm going to leave my needle down, I'm going to flip it around, and I'm going to go backwards again. So I'm stitching this seam two times just to make it nice and secure. So that seam is done and here is our tie right here. So I'm going to go to the other end and do the same thing. So it's the six inches from this middle point. This is our six inch line. So I'm going to line it up, stitch on that line. Come right to the edge, needle down, turn it around and go right back over that seam that I just created. And back stitch right there. Now this creates our tie, so we're ready to start putting in our beads in our other sections, so we'll go back to the mat. Now we're ready to add our, our micro beads to our channels. So here's our center opening right here. And I've put my micro beads into a container to make it easier to scoop them out and put them in. You need a quarter teaspoon of beads per section. So a quarter teaspoon here and a quarter teaspoon down here. And it doesn't need to be heaping, so just kind of pat them in. And then find your center opening. Dump in your beads. And then you want to make sure that they all go down to this section right here. And you can feel them. They're, even though they're small, you can kind of feel them on your fabric. So make sure that they are all, got one lonely friend here, they are all down right next to this seam that we sewed. So now all my beads are down on the right side of my scarf. And I'm gonna go ahead and load my beads into the left side of my scarf so when I go to sew, I can do both ends. When you do that, you wanna make sure that you grab here on the right side and all of your beads are going down into the other end of your scarf. Because if you pick up the right side all the way, then all of your beads go down to the wrong side. Make sure all my beads are down. And they are. And I like to push them all the way down right next to that seam. You can see, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a little bulge where they are. Then when I go to the machine, I want to be sure that I pick this up flat and I don't tip it so that my beads shift on me. So when we go to the machine, we're gonna stitch this three inch line off the center on both sides, and that creates our first channel on the left and our first channel on the right. So let's go to the machine. Now we're ready to stitch this line. Our beads are way down here at the end by our other seam, and we're gonna stitch this line to create our channel. So again, I'm gonna put my needle down on that line stitch right to the edge leave my needle down and I'm going to gently turn because I want to make sure that my other end of my scarf stays flat and my beads don't shift on me and I'm going to go back down that seam one more time back stitching at the end now those beads are secure in this channel so I'm going to do the same thing at the other end, making sure my beads are still way down here. Line it up. Stitch to the edge. Needle down, lift and turn. Go right back over that seam again. And backstitch. Now our beads are in our 
center or our end sections. Now we're ready to add beads to our center section. So I'm going to find my opening, get my quarter teaspoon of beads, and put them in. And this time, this is where I'm going to stitch, so I'm going to pour my beads and make sure they go to the bottom edge down by the fold. I'm just going to wiggle them all down there. And then I'm going to stitch this opening closed. And I want to stitch really close to that edge to make sure that this opening gets stitched all the way shut. So I'm going to start just past where it is down there. And I'm going to stitch past where the opening stops. So I'm going to stitch to about right there. This is the end of my opening and I'm going to stitch past that. Back stitch at the beginning. And I'm stitching really close to that edge. And now my opening is closed and my micro beads are in there. So the last thing you do is clip all your threads and then when you soak your uh, neck scarf for the first time, it takes that you're going to put it in a tub of water or a sink um, and you want to make sure that it's covered with water so it needs to be that deep and it takes about an hour or two hours for your beads to fully swell up and then I'll leave um, care instructions in the description box below. See you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed today's project, the neck cooling wrap. And when you store yours after it's wet, be sure you put it in a plastic bag, ziplock, zip it up, and store it in your refrigerator. And then it stays nice and cool for your next time you want to use it. I will also link in the description box a care tag that tells you how to take care of your neck wrap, how to uh, soak it the first time, and also be sure that you keep these away from small children and pets because those micro water beads can be dangerous for pets and small children. So I hope you liked today's project and see you in the next one.